This is chapter six, Flame Cutting Principles, from the Welding Practices and Principles book. Okay, we're going to talk now about oxyacetylene cutting or oxyfuel cutting. Okay, it's a process that is uh, pretty much limited to ferrous metals, which is uh, any metals containing iron, okay, and best used on low carbon steel. Um, there's other things that can be cut with it but it's not a real common or, or efficient process for cutting other stuff, but it is far and away the best process for cutting uh, low carbon steel. Okay. Um, what it is is actually a chemical process more so than a mechanical process. It's a form really of rusting. Okay, and what it does is you preheat the base metal to a temperature of 15 to 1600 degrees, usually about a, just a cherry red color, and then you put a, a, a jet of pure oxygen right into the center of the preheated area, and what it does is oxidizes that preheated area and burns away the oxidized metal. Okay, same process as rusting, only super accelerated. Okay, St uh, steel burns in pure oxygen after having reached its kindling temperature. Okay. All right, that's, that's basically how it works. It's around 15 to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat generated by the burning iron and the oxyacetylene flame is high enough to melt the iron oxide so that it runs off as molten slag. So you'll end up with, a, with the slag falling out the bottom of the, the kerf, they call it, which is the groove that, that is cut. Uh, like I said, it's just really a process of very rapid rusting. It's a chemical reaction is what it is, not a mechanical process. The uh, fuel gases used for, for cutting are pretty much the same as, as the ones used for welding. Um, acetylene is the most common of them because it generates the most heat in a small area. Actually, by BTUs, MAP gas burns with more BTUs, but the, the rate of the burning of the acetylene is so much higher that it actually generates more heat in a smaller area. It doesn't generate more heat all, all around, but more heat in a smaller area and creates a hotter flame. All right, some of the other gases that can be used for cutting are propane, natural gas, propylene, and MAP. MAP is a trade name. Uh, some of the equipment used you can, you can go with either a single purpose cutting torch, a torch that's made solely for the purpose of cutting, or more commonly is a, a normal uh, mixing chamber or torch barrel with a cutting attachment on it. Uh, that's, that's a more common, commonly used torch because it can be used for, for lots of different purposes. You can use them for welding, heating, and then you can put the cutting head on them, use them for cutting. Uh, strike, uh, spark lighter or striker, Oxygen and acetylene regulators, uh, hoses, oxygen hoses with couplings, acetylene hose with couplings, and remember oxygen hose always green, acetylene always red, acetylene nuts always have a, a groove cut in the flats of the nuts, uh, flame arresters and check valves to keep everything from back flashing into the hoses and into the regulators. Uh, portable tanks, portable tank outfit, or you can use, like in our case, a manifold system. We have both a portable and a manifold system where we have cutting stations and portable cutting torches. All right, the torch mixes the oxygen and acetylene, or whatever fuel, in the proportions necessary for cutting. It consists of a handle or mixing chamber where it, connecting tubes meet and mix the gas, okay, a cutting head. Um, the handle is equipped at the rear with hose connections for oxygen and acetylene. Needle valve in the acetylene inlet connection controls the supply. The oxygen furnished to the preheating flame is regulated by a preheat valve on the side of the handle. A high pressure oxygen valve is opened by a lever. That's where you get your cutting oxygen. You'll notice the cutting lever on top of the cutting torch or the cutting head. That's where the, the high pressure jet of oxygen that oxidizes the the preheated metal comes from. Okay. Uh, like I said, the adjustable cutting head is used 
most commonly because it can be attached in seconds. A lot more more uh, common use because it, it can be used for all sorts of different things, not just strictly a cutting machine. The tips that go in them, okay, what they have is a central hole in the center of the tip. That's where the, the oxygen jet comes from, surrounded by a series of preheat orifices or holes where the preheat flame, which is usually a neutral flame, comes out. And the job of those is to preheat the, the base metal, and then when the metal reaches the right temperature, then the oxygen jet flows through the center hole and out. Okay, the thicker metal that's to be cut, the larger tip you need, the larger center orifice. And uh, let's see, the larger, yeah, the thicker the metal, the larger the tip. Okay, uh, the tips are designated in high speed or standard. Okay, the high or the standard tip has a straight bore, uh, cutting oxygen port, and is typically used with oxygen pressures in the 30 to 60 psi range. While the high speed tips have a, a diverging cutting oxygen port that flares out towards the opening, this flaring out allows a much larger oxygen pressure, 60 to 100 psi while maintaining uniform oxygen jet and supersonic velocities. Okay, In most instances, the standard would be fine. The cutting oxygen orifice size is not usually affected by the type of fuel gas being used, whether it's acetylene, MAP, propane, whatever. However, the preheat orifices need to be the appropriate design for the type of fuel gas being used. The various fuel gases require different volumes of oxygen and fuel depending on the gas and, and the type of flame you're looking for. Okay, when you light the thing, of course, use a spark lighter or a striker. Never, never use matches, cigarette lighters, anything like that. Don't put those things in your pocket while you're, while you're running one of these because you're going to get a lot of sparks flying around. Okay, safety equipment, of course, always wear goggles um, with an with a approved lens probably something around a five, shade five lens. Always wear gloves, uh, gauntlet style, preferably sleeves and, and um, apron too if you can, and definitely boots. You get a lot of sparks, a lot of slag and stuff going to the floor. Uh, don't wear sunglasses. A lot of people just, you'll see them walk up and grab a torch wearing nothing but a pair of sunglasses, but most sunglasses are not a dark enough shade or not made to filter out the UV and the, and the uh, infrared. Okay, uh, the very large part of, the, of cutting today is, is performed by oxyfuel gas cutting machines. These machines have a device to hold the cutting torch and guide it along the work in a uniform rate, at a uniform rate of speed. It is possible to produce work of higher quality and at a greater speed than with the hand cutting torch. We have a uh, track burner in our shop that consists of a motorized carriage that carries the torch on, in a straight line and you can do beveled cuts or straight cuts with it and it does a really really nice job of cutting. We also have a shape cutter uh, line tracer that, that uses a, an eye, an electric eye, to trace a line on a piece of paper and uh, a torch connected to the other end that cuts out whatever the, the uh, eye is tracing. Oh, maximum productive capacity is achieved through the use of stationary cutting machines developed for production, cutting of regular and irregular shapes of practically any design. And this is kind of what I was talking about there. You can actually attach more torches, or as many torches as the thing as it's capable of holding, and cut several different parts, and they'll be identical. Uh, the new ones, the new programmable ones, are really incredible. I mean, they put everything in in a computer and it just cuts out the shapes. Uh, stack cutting, that's where you put many pieces of plate in a stack, cut them all at once. It's kind of hard to do. Everything has to be perfectly aligned. You have to have uh, a large enough tip to cut the thickness of the stack, and you have to make sure that all edges where you start are preheated. And uh, you can do it with plates up to about a half inch thick, generally from 3 sixteenths up to half. If you get down eighth inch or, or below, you get a lot of warpage. Uh, another type of a machine 
is a beam cutter. It's a portable structural fabricating machine. Uh, from one rail setting on, the operator can trim, bevel, and cope beams, channels, and angles. You see a picture of it in your book here, uh, figure 615. It's, it's kind of an interesting machine. I've never actually seen one. Okay, another, another uh, cutting piece of cutting equipment is called an oxygen lance. Okay, that's a method of cutting heavy sections of steel that would be very difficult to cut by any other means. The lance is merely a length of black iron pipe fitted with a valve on one end to which an oxygen hose is connected. Oxygen pressures of 75 to 100 PSI are used. The pipe size may vary from three quarter, from one quarter to three eighths inch, I'm sorry. And uh, in order to, to start the cut, it is necessary to preheat the, the cutting end of the pipe to a cherry red with an oxy fuel cutting or welding torch. Once it is cherry red, the oxygen flow is started. The steel pipe burns in a self-sustaining exothermic reaction and the heating torch is removed. When the burning end of the lance is brought close to the workpiece, the work is melted by the heat of the flame. Okay, uh, those are actually getting pretty common, I guess, out in the industry. Again, that's something I've never really seen, but I guess it's, it's becoming more and more common, used for, for cutting thick, heavy gauge stuff. All right, I believe that's everything in this chapter. So read it thoroughly, and good luck.